Hey guys, what's going on? This is Daryl Addison at TorpedoPot.com. Daryl Addison at TorpedoPot.com. And you know, these were pepper plants. And I want you to really count them because this is how many pepper plants we had in here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, Two, two, three, four, five, two, six, seven, eight, two, nine, thirty, 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 thirty. We had about two hundred peppers grow out of this planter, and we're looking at about thirty pepper plants that had been growing. Um, now, the year before we planted these, we did the same thing. We grew a lot of peppers, and they did extremely well. Normally, we don't go in and change the soil. We cut simply the top down. And uh, but I need to check my feeding stick this year because I'm starting to start up my pots again and I'm blowing the water through them so I could uh, start putting in some seeds. I've got some cilantro I want to put in. I've got some uh, curl parsley I want to put in. I've got some uh, um, chives, uh, uh, garlic chives I want to put in. And I have some beets I want to put in. And so this will give me an opportunity to, uh, to change everything up and get this new crop in and make sure the feeding sticks are, are feeding them correctly. So. What I wanted to do was, uh, what I normally do when I have plants, I simply just pull them out. But remember now, this has gone through two years of growing. And so you're looking at, after two years, this is the amount of work that I would do um, to assure my next crop does well. So what I'm gonna do is that, I wanna show you that uh, how the torpedo pot builds its own ecosystem. It allows the plants, it allows the nutrients, it allows the uh, the pill bugs and all the microbes and all the living organisms to go to work and to do their job for you. We didn't add any worms, we didn't do anything to this, uh, to this planet right here, but you're going to see a lot of living organisms inside this planet when it sits outside. The objective is to allow the planter not to be, um, how do you say, not to allow the planter uh, things that are outside of this environment to attack it. You don't want anything to come in and destroy the environment that we created. So therefore we isolate the plant and we create a clinical environment uh, for that planter so that you won't get any fungal growth and things like that or many of the uh, conditions or machine oils and stuff like that to take place. So with that being said, or anything that we can actually grab onto and grow, we don't want uh, parasitical fungus to grow and start eating other things up and creating a whole new problem with your torpedo pot. So of these 30 plants that are in here, they produced a huge amount of peppers and I love the way they've been able to produce peppers and I'm, I'm very grateful that we can grow them that way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start lifting this up because I want you to see what's inside of this, this plant now. It's been sitting here for two years growing food. That's all it does is grow food. Now, I don't have to take these things out, but I wanna check my feeding stick. So let's pull it up and see what this thing actually looks like. So normally you could take plants and just pull out one at a time, but in this case, I want you to see how entrenched this is. And this entrenchment is just limited to really the top layer here of the soil. I'm going to pull this out so we can see a little bit more and see what's going on here. So this is what's going on here. Now I'm just going to take my cutters and cut that off. I don't have them with me, so I'm just going to pull it off lightly. So I'm just pull them apart, shake the soil off because I definitely want to save the soil. I'm not trying to waste anything. And look at that. Look at that, guys. Look at that. So you'll find out when you are growing your plants, like we do at Torpedo Pot, you don't have that deep root system. And the reason why you don't have that deep root system because the roots are not going far to look for food. Everything is right within their sphere of influence. So all the nutrients, and you see how tied up it is inside of that root ball. It's just tied up. Those roots are going to town for multiple years. Let's take more out and see what's going on. Ah, look at that, is that beautiful? Man, look at that, that's beautiful. Now, I don't throw that away, that's compost. So I don't throw my living organisms away because they can be used for the next season. Ah, oh, that's just sheer beauty. That is so beautiful. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? That is so beautiful. That is beautiful. Man, that is definitely nutrition. A lot of nutrition inside of that. Now, one thing I want you to pay close attention to is that we had 
30 plants growing in this torpedo pot, okay? 30 plants. Now, we filled it up with soil. We probably filled up with soil maybe during, uh, maybe once or twice during the growing season, maybe just once for these right here during the growing season. And so we added, I would say, she's not that much soil, maybe about this much soil in the plant just to plant it or fill it up. So it doesn't take a lot of soil to grow your plants. The nutrients that you're getting from the soil, the mass of the plant itself is not coming from the soil. It's coming from the carbon in the air. So the nutrients is what's forming the plant and what's developing the plant. And so you don't require a lot of soil. So in torpedo pot, you use your soil over and over and over again. You don't have to buy, uh, replace your soil at all. You use it over and over and over again. So to grow that much food requires so little soil. Let's see if we can get some more of these out of here. Oh, here we go. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? That is gorgeous. That is absolutely beautiful. Man, I love that. That's what's growing in your torpedo pot. It creates its own environment. Let's get a little bit more out of here. Some more out here. I said, I haven't touched it in two years. So in two years, this thing has been entrenched like, I'm, I'm sure the first uh, growth broke itself down, but this is the second growth year of growth. So it's doing this thing. So I love this. Now I can go in and start assessing my environment. Okay. Here. Looks beautiful. The soil is very healthy. Now, I'm going to, I think the pot is already on. Turn it all the way on right now. I want to see what the uh, feeding stick is doing. And to see if I like it. Now, for this right here, you see how it's wet. And it's definitely doing its job. But I think I might replace it because I want more consistency among the newer, the newer feeding sticks. But this is definitely doing its job. I don't know why I should replace it. I should just leave it the way it is. It's doing a good job. So when I run this, like when I run it with the peppers, I might run this for about, uh, I don't know, for about two minutes every three hours or something, or four hours for those 30 peppers, for mature peppers. When it's just little babies, it's a whole different story. You just want to saturate the seeds, create a moist, area for the seed so that they can grow and take off. As you can see, it's starting to drip down, okay? So it lets me know this feeding stick is still working very well. Now, you have to be careful for your feeding sticks because your feeding sticks may get clogged because of the, uh, the impurities in your water from the house that you're using. If you have a lot of particulates that are going to, uh, or you see them in your glass when you're drinking water and stuff like that, they're gonna end up in your feeding stick. Um, your timer has a filter in it that should uh, uh, sift out a lot of particulates but still nevertheless you just want to be very careful about your feeding stick to make sure um, that it's consistently watering all of your plants so we have now planters that we've cut on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten you know, about eleven planters now on, on this row and I'm about to start putting my plants in which I'm so excited about because this is the extent of my garden I tell you what let me go to some plants and put them in here for you and then we can start together so what I normally do is take my feeding stick. I know that the front of the pot is there. And I just simply fold my feeding stick down. Fold it down. Level the, the soil out. And now let's go grab some plants and put them in. Now, we have a lot of plants that we like to put in these torpedo pots. But the problem is, is that as you go through your season, you're going to want to put a lot more plants in your torpedo pot. So be careful about filling them up 
Uh, when I say fill them up, I don't mean necessarily giving them access to soil. You can do as much as you want with the soil. But when I say filling them up, I mean access to sunlight. Sunlight is so critical to your plant's growth. So you don't want them to have to compete with each other for that growth. Now, I normally, this partially, we had it in this planter down here, which you can't see, which you put all this debris in right now. And it grew into a bouquet of about, about three feet tall. And it just overcame the area. And so I know what this partially can do. And the garlic chives, we had them, and, and they did extremely well also. We were able to eat off of it. And I did it from seeds. I took garlic chives, the little black seeds, and I put them inside of there. And, but they like, they germinate in very hot weather. They can exist in cool weather, but my germination didn't kick off until it was really, really hot for my garlic chives. But all these plants right here should be exist in cool weather at this point. So um, I'm satisfied. So let's try to put some in here and see what we can do with it. It's gonna be freezing like 20 degrees next week. And these are cool uh, weather plants. They can withstand frost, uh, you know, and as long as it bounces back, but 20 degrees, I'm not too sure about consistently throughout next week. Um, but I'm gonna give it a try anyhow. Torpedo pot. All right, so let's get these things in here. All right, so I normally just take the plant out right here. This is the extent of your garden, okay? Don't make anything more complicated than what it is. I put it on top of the feeding stick. This will help you at least set your garden up to find out where you want your plants at, okay? As you can see, I love my, uh, what is it? This is the curl parsley. And so we eat off of it. It's a great, uh, to me, is a, a great balance in my meals. And I, I really do love it. And so getting them out this early will give them a nice fighting, fighting chance, a fighting start. And that's what I want to do. I want to give them a fighting chance. What I'm going to do now is take soil. I'm going to put around the middle of the planter. I'm going to steal soil from another planter so we can speed up the process. I'm trying to get in between as possible, as much as you can get inside of there, the soil. This is really great soil. It's been growing for a since last year. Well, actually, this soil has been in for a long time, maybe about three years. We get it all around there as much as possible, okay? As much as you can get the soil inside of these planters. Because we're going to now saturate this and let that feeding stick run to get those soil, uh, the, the uh, plant to connect. And don't worry about, I mean, you don't want to tear the limbs off the plant, but don't worry about hurting the plant. You're not really going to hurt it. It's going to bounce back. It's in a great environment. It's been looking for an environment like the one you're putting it in right now so it can maximize its growth. So we'll do that. Then I'll clear the middle out and start putting torpedo, some plants in the middle also. Now, you don't have to garden the way I do, okay? I garden my way for my needs, my, my needs, and what I'm trying to grow and eat and things like that. So your garden may not look like mine. But this is just to give you an idea of all the possibilities that are out there. Okay, so it looks like they're well connected. Looks like there's a lot of moist soil all around it. We cut the torpedo pot on. It's been running already for a while, so a lot of the soil is um, it's already wet. So I'm going to cut it all the way on, and I'm going to let it run, and then hopefully we'll let it connect. Now, I want to try this. I want to try it in one more planter also, see if we can get it started.
and get some soil out of the other one. This is great soil. Oh my gosh, this soil is beautiful. All right, so I'm going to level it out. I want to know where the feeding stick, I don't want it to be too low, okay? So I'm going to go back down. I'm going to pull up the feeding stick just a little bit. There you go. There you go. It's right there. Put it down just a little bit. Okay, that looks great. These garlic chives are gonna do very well. Now, those who are growing in the ground, you know, I take my hat off to you because that's a lot of work, but it may be very well unnecessary. Because a lot of things you can do with your torpedo pot, you don't need to grow in the ground anymore like you used to. Now, I could have very well started for seeds like I did last year with these uh, garlic chives, but I'm choosing not to do it this year. I'm getting lazy because I realize I can grow anything with the torpedo pot. And so I'll just buy it and put it in here. That's all. Now, remember, now it's going to be cold out, so bury them a little bit as much as you can, okay? Insulate them as much as you can. They need that insulation. If you have any leaves, it would be a great idea to throw leaves on top of there also. Because that would uh, protect them from the cold that's about to come. And that, that cold will come. So we're going to let this pot stay on also. All right, so that pot is on. This pot is on. Okay. So this is what we planted so far. We have nine garlic chive plants inside of this planter. Then we have uh, 11 parsley plants inside of this planter. Well, that's the extent of my gardening. I don't have to do anything else. I cut the water on. Now, I don't have my timer running at this point. The reason why I don't have my timer running is because if we go through that frost, I don't want to damage my timer, so I turn it off. And what I'll do, I'll manually water the plants that I have right now. And so I'll just turn on my spigot when I need to cut it on and cut it off. But it's going to be pretty cold. So what I'll do is that I'll saturate them with water um, so they can sit with this nice temperature right now. And then when that freezing comes, they can feed off that water. I don't have to worry about coming back out and doing it again. But uh, I'm going to add a little bit more plants to these. I like what I'm seeing here. I don't think if I can get one more in there. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I'll just fill it with soil. Just get it on in there, that's all. Yeah, that's it. Now, this will grow into a big ball. And there will be a, a lot of growth that takes place out of this torpedo pot. So, these things will not stay small for long. Enjoy them while you can, as little babies. As they get bigger, they're going to take over this whole pot, and that's exactly what I want them to do. I see a little space here. I don't like leaving space, so I'm gonna to try to fit something else inside of there. Let's make it 10, 10 garlic chives. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks good. I like that. All right, that's the extent of my garden. Woo! Now, just imagine. You don't have to buy a tiller. You don't have to buy a shovel. No spade, no trowel. You don't need underground water systems. You don't need no tarps. You don't need to have cinder blocks. You don't need pesticides, fertilizers, or any type of insecticides. The only thing you need is a torpedo pot. The average gardener spends about $400 a year, the average gardener, growing food. Now, some of their food, they're not very successful at growing. The return on investment is simply not worth $400 a year. With torpedo pot, you can do it. Not only can you grow, but you can make a profit in your investment in growing your plants. Now, just imagine, everybody's cold right now. Nobody's coming out. Nobody's touching the outside. They're sitting inside waiting for this weather to bounce around and come back. Not a torpedo pot. We're eating plants right now that have come back from last year and they are absolutely stunning. So a pewter pot is the way to go. It would definitely uh, give you the food supply that you're looking for. Get a torpedo pot. Trust me, it's the best thing you'll purchase in this year. Darrell Addison, torpedopot.com. Darrell Addison, torpedopot.com. Thanks guys, bye-bye.